Mahigit labing apat na oras mula Maynila, pumunta ang Born to be Wild sa Cagayan para saksihan ang ginawang necropsy ng Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources Region 2 at Municipal Agricultural Office ng Cagayan. Pagdating natin, na-dissect na sila at uh, ito na lang yung karkas na naiwan na, na sa atin. No? Sa laki ng halos 30 feet, juvenile o bata pa ang brudus whale dahil kaya nitong lumaki hanggang 55 feet. Doon sa necropsy, do, kung main organ lang po yung chinect namin, wala pong gaano ng uh, lesions or pathological findings. Maliban doon sa liver which is medyo nagkakaroon ng uh, discoloration, oh. naninilaw. Pero ang mas umagaw ng atensyon ko ay ang dami ng kagat o sugat sa katawan ng balyena. Ayan. Dito rin, no? Mayroon tayong mga marks na nakikita na kagaya nito. Sa buntot, 1, 2, 3, 4. Ito, ito yung may necrotic pa, oh. Nanana na pa. And this one's also like that. Uh, yung iba, na nag uh, na, medyo matagal na, yung iba bago pa lang din. That looks like cookie cutter shark bites. That's usually not a cause of mortality by itself. The whales generally can survive that. I'm going to guess it wasn't the, the main cause of death. As we know, sharks have a role to play in the ecosystem. They remove the weak or injured or sick animals to keep the population healthy. Pero bakit nga ba nangyayari ang wildlife stranding? Usually these animals strand because they're so sick or injured that they can't stay at the surface on their own and they go into the shallow areas so that they can hold themselves up and breathe and they won't sink and drown. Hindi man lahat ng marine wildlife stranding ay may malinaw na dahilan. Ang mga ganitong insidente ay pwedeng maging paalala kung bakit natin dapat ingatan ang karagatan. Yung strandings na nagaganap sa Pilipinas at sa buong mundo, no? they're telling us something. To give us signals no? to stop polluting our oceans.